The New York Times was headquartered in one Times Square from 1904 until 1917. Back in 1904, the New York Times moved to one Times Square from downtown near City Hall. At the time, Times Square was the hinterlands. Everyone sort of made fun of them because there was nothing up here. Other newspapers also thought they'd never make it out to their customers, who were mostly in Brooklyn and downtown. The New York Times was smart. The subway was being built as they were moving uptown. The Times got all their materials in by subway, and they had a printing press in the basement of the building. They would put the paper on the subway and send it downtown, and actually got the news out faster before other papers. It was really the beginning of the great escalation of the New York Times. Still though, the New York Times needed to promote their new headquarters, which was in a horse and carriage trade area at the time called Long Acre Square. They decided to throw a New Year's Eve party. At that time, New Year's Eve was celebrated at Trinity Church near Wall Street downtown. But the church elders hated the celebration because people would get drunk and very raucous and they'd throw bricks in the air and cause all sorts of trouble. When the Times offered to have the party, they were thrilled. So in 1904 and 1905, hundreds of thousands of people gathered in what was now Times Square for New Year's Eve. They had fireworks back then, but the burning ash would rain down on the celebrants below. In order to celebrate New Year's Eve without hurting anyone, they came up with an idea. They decided to combine the maritime tradition of lowering a ball at noon in ports around the world with what at the time was new technology, electricity. The result was this lighted time ball. They built the first ball out of iron and wood. It weighed 700 pounds and it had 125 watt light bulbs on it. It was a lighthouse in the middle of Manhattan because at that time, one Times Square was the tallest building in the area. And this tradition has continued on now for over 105 years. There were only two years that the ball didn't drop in Times Square. 1942 and 1943, there was a voluntary dim out. They didn't want to light up the skyline for the German subs out in the ocean. Instead, those two years, they rang chimes, which was another symbol of welcoming in the new year. Up until 1995, the entire ball crew was six sign workers and a guy with a stopwatch. That's how they lowered the ball, with ropes, by hand. One year, there was a kid up there that got tied up with the ropes, and so they had to stop the ball halfway down. Even so, no matter what happens, the New Year still arrives. There have been seven versions of the ball. The first ball was the one made back in 1907. They used that ball until 1920, when they made it a little bit lighter. The 1920 ball was made completely out of iron. I don't understand why that makes it lighter, but it was only 400 pounds. They had the same number of lights, still 125 watt light bulbs. That ball remained in use until approximately 1954, when they took a new material, aluminum, and created an aluminum ball with 180 light bulbs on it. That ball is the ball that was used up until 1995. It's the same ball that in the 1980s was turned into an apple for the I Love New York campaign. They took the white light bulbs out, they put red light bulbs on and added a stem at the top of the ball and called it an apple, but it was still the same ball. In 1995, however, we redesigned it significantly. We took the aluminum ball, wrapped it in an aluminum skin, we gave it computer controls, halogen lamps, strobes, and we put this lighting effect in it. It was all top notch. We called it the glitter ball and it had 10,000 rhinestones. For all that fancy technology, that year the ball was about two seconds late. Big controversy at the time, but of course New Year's Eve still arrived. Ever since then, we've been on time. We had that same ball until 1999 when we came to the millennium. We decided we wanted to do something special for the new millennium and we got together with Waterford Crystal and Philips Lighting and created the millennium ball. That ball, at the time, was the largest crystal ball in the world. It weighed over a thousand pounds and it was just a gorgeous symbol for the beginning of the new millennium. 2007 was another milestone, the 100th anniversary of the ball dropping tradition. We wanted to do something special, so we decided to update the ball with the latest technology, Philips LED lights. Using LEDs, the ball could do millions of colors and patterns like a kaleidoscope. We loved it so much that we decided to make it permanent. The next year, we actually built an entirely new ball that's 12 feet in diameter, twice the size of the previous balls, weighing almost 6 tons, that is 11,875 pounds. It has 32,276 LED lights and is 30% more energy efficient than the LED ball before it, but something like 90% more efficient than the halogen lamps and all the lights before that. The ball now shines atop one Times Square year-round. It can show all the colors of the rainbow and looks like a brilliant kaleidoscope, a jewel in the sky that changes colors all the time. And that's the story of the Times Square Ball.